We've talked about sequences, now we got to talk about series. And with geometric series, we have to talk about two different types of series, because infinite series and finite series are going to have some slightly different properties, and we need to consider them both. We'll start with finite geometric series. The sum of a finite geometric series is going to be given as follows. u sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. And of course, it comes with the catch that r cannot be 1. Obviously, we can't divide by 0. So when n is the number of terms, u sub 1 is the first term, and r is the common ratio. So for example, here's our finite geometric series. Um, and I'm just going to apply the formula here. Actually, I'm just going to stick with this color. So u sub 1, well, Let's figure that out first. u sub 1 is just going to be 2 to the 1 minus 1, which is 2 to the 0, so it's 1. 1 minus r to the n. So my common ratio is 2 to the fifth, the sum of all five terms, over 1 minus 2. So I'm going to get, let's see, 2 to the fifth is 32. So I have negative. 31 over negative 1, and I get positive 31. And sure enough, if I wanted to add up and check all these terms, I could, and I promise you I would get 31 here. So it's just plugging into the formula and evaluating. For an infinite geometric series, we have to talk about a couple separate cases. An infinite geometric series can either converge or diverge. So if the series approaches a finite value as the number of terms increases, we call it convergent. So it's convergent when the sum approaches a finite value, sum tends to a finite value. You can almost think about it somewhat like an asymptote. We actually, if we were to graph the points, maybe it would look something like this, and it approaches a number, and we could say this converges. If it does not converge, that is to say basically that it's going to approach either positive or negative infinity more. Usually, there are some cases where that's not necessarily true. Um, it's said to be divergent. So let's look at a couple cases here. If I look at my first one, and I just kind of look at the terms and then the sum up to that term. So the first term is just going to be 1. And then the sum of all the numbers from the first to the first term is just 1. And then the second term is going to give me 1 half. I'm going to do this in decimals because it's going to make the addition easier because um, I'm doing this by hand. And if I add up all the terms, I get 1.5. And then 3, I get 0.2, uh, 5, yep, I'm not crazy. And I get 1.75. If I do 4, I'm going to get 0.125, I'm going to get 1.875. And if I do one more, just for the sake of time, 0.625, 1.9, 3, And if we were to continue this out an in infinite number of terms, I'm going to approach the number 2. And so we would say that this sum, this series, converges, and it converges to 2. It's never going to hit 2, but it's going to get pretty darn close. So we said it converges to 2. Whereas something like this, let's do this again, the first term is just 1, so the sum of 1 is 1. Uh, the second term is going to be 3, and the sum is 4. And the third term is 9, and the sum is 13. And the fourth term is 27, the sum is 40, the fifth term is 81, the sum is 121. I'm going nowhere. I could go out one more if I wanted to, 243, 364. If I go out infinite terms, my sum becomes infinite as well. My sum will grow without bound. And so we say that a geometric series converges only in these cases. We say that this sum diverges 
In this case, we could be specific and say it diverges, diverges to positive infinity, but we don't really need to say it. Um, so it diverges. And the condition for convergence is that r is between negative 1 and 1 and not 0. So something I didn't mention in the last video that I needed to, and I'll go back in and add like a little edit card, is that r cannot be 1, negative 1, or 0 in a geometric series for a geometric series of the form as such. We can't have 1, negative 1, or 0. We'll explore these conditions in class. We'll do a little quick mini investigation just to kind of see what happens when we do have these uh, conditions and see why it doesn't work. Well, when we have an infinite convergent series, we can find what that converging point is, that number that the series converges to. We can find its sum. And the formula for a convergent series is much simpler than the one for a finite, just general finite series. And we say that the sum, and sometimes you'll see it with a little infinity, just to say that it's an infinite sum, is just the first term divided by 1 minus the common ratio. That's it. That's all. Much nicer than our friend up here. So for example, let's just deal with plugging in and solving things, right? We're past that point of just dealing with the right-hand side. Let's play with a little more. So a geometric series converges to 8. The second term of the series is negative 5 halves. Find the common ratio. So let's play with some things. We don't we might not have enough information up front to know exactly what to do, but we can play with this. So a geometric series converges to 8. So I know that that sum, right? So the first term divided by 1 minus r is equal to 8. We know that the second term of the series is negative 5 halves. So u2, which is just u1 times r, is equal to negative 5 over 2, and I want to find the common ratio. I think we can do this. I think this is something that we can absolutely do. Um, I effectively have something like a system again. So I'm just going to call this u1 equals 8 times 1 minus r, and that'll let me make a substitution. So I have 8r 1 minus r equals negative 5 over 2. And so I have, let's see here, maybe I'll say r minus r squared equals negative 5 over 16. I don't know if that makes it any nicer. Um, hmm, let's see here. And I move some things over, 5 plus 16r minus 16r squared. Ooh, that's gross. I'm not going to try to factor this. I don't think this is going to be particularly pretty. I'm just going to take a sledgehammer to the problem, and I'm just going to jump to the quadratic formula. Plus or minus the square root of 16 squared, 256. Minus 4 times a times c, so plus 320, Ooh, gross, over 2a, negative 32. So 256 plus 320 is 576, and the square root of that, I believe, is 24. Yeah, so negative 16 plus or minus 24 all over 32, ew. Uh, we get hmm, 8 over 32, which is just 1 fourth. Or we get negative 32 over 32. Excuse me, no, we get negative 40 over 32, which would be 5 over 4. And actually, it dawned on me that I misplaced a negative here, so let me go back and fix that. This should be negative 32, so this should be negative 1 fourth and positive 5 fourths. Can I have both? No, I can't have both. I just said one common ratio, and you might be wondering, how do I eliminate one then? 
Well, the geometric series converges. We were just told that the geometric series converges to eight. So even that number, or sorry, that word is crucial. In order for a geometric series to converge, we said that the common ratio needs to be between negative one and one and not zero. Well, only one of these fits that description and it is one fourth, not five fourths. So the common ratio here that we need is negative one fourth, one fourth, which will allow this series to converge.